Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as we're waiting for uh, head coach Jeff Walls, just go through the Louisville uh, schedule, 205 to 220, uh, head coach Jeff Walls press conference. Locker room media availability is 205 until 235. Student athletes on the dais from 225 to 240. And they will include Erica Carter, Sam Furing, and Asia Durr. And then practice is from 250 until 420 with the first 15 minutes open as is customary. Uh, Nick Evans is the SID for Louisville. Coach Wall should be out here shortly. Thank you. game suspension. Coach Walls, thank, uh, thank you for joining us. And thank you. Congratulations. Welcome to Albany. I appreciate it. As is customary, we will ask that you please open with a statement. Uh, as far as your team, how you got here, uh, and your expectations, and then we'll open it up to members of the media to ask questions. No, that sounds great. Uh, first off, I just want to start off by saying I'm the head coach at the University of Louisville, and uh, you know I think G Gina would be a wonderful candidate uh, for that position that is open. So before the even questions start coming, I'm the head coach at the University of Louisville. Have loved it, enjoy it, it's been great. So now I'll start talking about our team so we can Please. focus on that. Uh, you know, it's been, uh, it's been a great year for us. Uh, really, really been impressed with how these young women have, you know, figured out some new roles, have taken on new, new, new responsibilities. I think with the graduation of Maish Hines Allen, I think a lot of people were questioning, you know, how are we going to replace her? Uh, and, and it's what I've said when Angel graduated, Shoney graduated, you're not going to replace them. You've just got to find players that can do similar things, and it might take four or five of them. Um, and that's what we've been able to do. I thought I think Bianca Dunham has had a great year for us. Kylie Shook has started to come on extremely well. Sam Furing's been very consistent. And then you've got players like Dana Evans, who's you know sixth man of the year for us, who has had a really good freshman year, but has gotten better as the year has, has gone on. Uh, Erica Carter, Jasmine Jones. I mean, you, you just go through, everybody's just given us a little bit more. So it's not that we replaced Maisha, we're, we're just getting more from everybody on the team and that's what you have to do. Um, you know, we're really excited for the opportunity to still, still be playing. Uh, o only 16 teams left practicing. Uh, it, it's not easy, it, 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 it's difficult, and it's something that, that we're really proud of. Oregon State, it, it, again, a great basketball team. I've, I've got the utmost respect for Scott. I've had the opportunity to be out at, 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 USA, at USA Basketball with him, and I've watched him uh, coach, and he's, he's just a, a great tactician. Um, really enjoy watching his teams play, and I, and I know tomorrow night, you know, it, it should be a great basketball game. Thank you. Uh, Eric, question up here on the right, Doug. What's going on, Doug? We like to be friendly. Doug Feinberg, the AP. Uh, Jeff, first part of the question is, did Magic Johnson call you yet? Not yet. And the second part is, I mean, you joke about it, but is it distracting? I mean, no. this it, time it, of time, it, it all stuff going every, out there? Doug, it, it happens every March. You know, it's the same thing. You know, S Samantha Williams, you know, is just named the head, head coach at Eastern Kentucky. And just, I can't tell you how excited I am for her. Our players are excited for her. And I'm getting emails and text messages. And our fan base is fantastic. You know, we, we have some very passionate fans. They're like, why are you doing this now? It's distracting the team. You know, and, and, I, and I joke with our players all the time. I'm like, guys, you can solve this if you'll just suck. 
If you don't win games, nobody will hire any of my assistants, and you won't ever have to worry about my name coming up for anything. You know, if we're three and 21, I promise you this is not a discussion. So I tell them, you know, even when Cam Neubauer was here for one year with us in 2013, you know, we make that final four run and get to the championship and Cam gets a job at Belmont. And, you know, the, kid, the kids were sad. You know, he was only with us for a year, but as an assistant, I wanted a chance to be a head coach one day. You know, that's what I wanted to do. And I've told everybody on my staff, if that's your goal, we're going to do everything we can to get you that job. Uh, and, and, you know, Cam was one that I, I'll tell you, after a year, he's like, gosh, I just don't feel like it's right. I'm like, Cam, if we can get you the job that you want, let's get it. And with Eastern Kentucky, when that opportunity came up, Sam Williams, you know, was like, okay, let's go after it. And, you know, it's like, why are they announcing it now? Well, they've had an opening and Sam was the one they wanted. So it's not a distraction to our team. Our players were excited for her. And this comes up every March. Names are thrown out. I mean, Corey's name's in the mix, Scott Ruick's name in the mix. You might as well put Gino's name in it. You might, might as well have all four from this region. It's just what happens. So no, our kids are fired up. They're excited to play. And uh, we know what's at stake. We've, you know, we've been through this. Uh, we know everybody playing right now is really good. You've got to give them your full attention, and you've got to be dialed in, and I know these young women are. We have a question over here on the left. As a reminder, please uh, state your name and affiliation. Hey, what do you see from Michaela Pivik and specifically the intangibles? No, she, she's really good. Um, she, she plays so hard. Uh, she, she, she's one of those players that as you continue to watch on film, you know, her, her stats are, are, are good, but I think it's everything that you don't see on a stat sheet is what she does. You know, she's diving on the floor after, lo after loose balls. She's getting her hand on a pass. She's always in there mi uh, mixing it up for a rebound. Uh, she comes up with big plays. That's, that's, that's what really impresses me about her. You know, we've talked about her as a staff as well as everybody on that team. But she, she is one for sure that really stands out just because of the energy level that she plays with. Uh, you know, it, it's coaching the game. The X's and O's part, you know, everybody, I, I think, can do that with players. But finding players that will just play hard and have a motor that doesn't stop is what's really hard to find. And she is one of those. I, I've, I've really, really been impressed with her. Thank you. Uh, question on the right, Tim. Hey, Jeff, Tim Wilkin from the Albany Times Union. Um, UConn's been the number one seed for like the last 12 years in the East. And here you are, you're the number one seed. Are you surprised? that you are the number one seed? No, I mean, no. I mean, sh sh should I be? I mean, we're 31 and whatever. I mean, going into it, uh, I thought our kids had worked extremely hard, uh, had, had, had played well. You know, I'm not even sure we were the fourth number one. If you look at what everybody had done, I thought we were right there. And at the same time, you know, we got beat pretty handedly in the ACC championship game. There's no qu no question about it. But uh, when when you're without two starters, you're starting point guard. We find out a half hour before the game she's not going to play, and then Sam Fury plays for 12 minutes. I, I can promise you, when you're playing Notre Dame, you better be at full strength. Uh, you aren't going to beat them with two or three starters out. They score the, the basketball too too well, and then a after that game. I figured we'd be coming here to Albany as a one or a two, and what's it really matter? You know, it, it really has no bearing on anything. But I, I did feel pretty confident. I think my staff can tell you that, that we were coming up here. Uh, and now you've, you've just got to show up and play. It doesn't matter what seed you are. When you get to this time of the year, when you get to the Sweet 16, I've said it since my first year, you get to the Sweet 16, anything can happen. You know, it's, it's not the best team that's always going to win. It's a team that plays the best that night. And then a few breaks here or there. Ball goes off of your foot out, out, out of bounds, but they give the ball back to you. You know, anything, it, it's what it comes down to. I go back to 13. You know, if we played Baylor 100 times, that may have been the one time that we beat them. But all you've got to do is beat somebody one night, one game. 
So it, the, the, the one or two seed to me really does not matter. But no, I was not surprised. We have a question over here on the left. Michelle may have been, but I wasn't. <laughs> hey, Coach, Steve Kress from the Kravalskas at times. Oregon State's played a couple of the tournament games really close down to the wire, a couple ones at the late of the season. What have you noticed that they've, that they've done to be able to kind of pull those out? They've scored more points. I mean, it's one thing. I mean, I, we talk about as a staff on film. I mean, it's one thing. They don't panic. They just continue to do what they do. Um, it, it's really impressive because they have had a few, a few ball games that I think everybody was like, oh, look, they're about to get upset. And then when the clock expires, they've won. Uh, you know, I think they went on a 20-0 run against Utah earlier this year to, to win the game. I, they, they just continue to do what they do. Scott's done a remarkable job with them, he, you know, Kylie, for the past several years that they believe in what they're doing and that's what good what good teams do so he, he's just got a a great group that believes in what they do as I individuals and as a team another question here on the left uh, michelle bopel espn.com i do want to go on the record saying i think you guys would have beaten baylor more than once if you played him 100 times and you think so i think more than okay yes, so <laughs> um but uh you, you beat him the time that counted right that's so, right um I don't think any of your kids were on the ACC all defensive team, and yet this no. has been one of the best, I think, one of the better defensive teams you, you've had. And I, we saw that in the first couple rounds. Do you think that's just because you play such good team defense? Maybe not one person stands out? Yeah, you know, this is back to back years that we've actually led the ACC in defense and points allowed per, uh, per game in either year. But neither have we had a player on the all defensive team. And I think that's truly because we, we do play such good team defense. Uh, there, there's not one person that, that's, you know, leading the conference in steals. Uh, now, Sam Furing last year, I was a little bit surprised. I mean, I think she, she may have led the country in charges taken. I think she had 70-something throughout, through, throughout a season. And I mean, it, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, I think she had eight in our first game when we played at, at Ohio State. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it's a group that takes pride in it. Like it, it, it was really neat because we're sitting there playing in that uh, second round game and our goals, you know, our goal is to try to hold people under 50. And we gave, we gave up f a, a, a 50 toward, towards the end and the kids were like, oh gosh, you know, and I'm going, you know what, it's, it, it's pretty nice when you've got a group of players that even though that you're going to win the game, you know, you're up, they still are taking pride in trying to get stops. Here on the right, Doug. Jeff, two-part question. What's Carter's health status right now for you guys? And in your beginning statement, you talked about everyone, I think, getting better. The one name you didn't mention was Asia. And obviously, she was very good. Just talk about her She's been bit. bad all year. I, I figure as much. <laughs> but what, what she's brought to you guys for the season and for her career so far? Erica, you know, I, the kid's a competitor. You know, the, you know, I, I really don't don't even ask her half the time, because I know what the answer is. I'm going to get. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, she'll she'll go today. I I asked her, hey, you practicing today? She's like, yeah. I said okay, and then she'll play tomorrow. I mean, is she a a hundred percent? I don't know if she's at a a hundred percent, but she'll never tell me. But you know, the one thing that we have a good enough relationship is is i'm like hey you just have to tell me if you can't go i'm not going to put you out there if there's any chance that you're going to get injured uh so you've got to be upfront honest with me on that and that's when you know she came to me our acc finals and just like coach i can't go and i knew that okay if she's telling me that she she's really hurting uh and then she could have played in the first round game but i, I thought if we could you know if we could afford to give her an extra day and a half rest, it would only benefit her, and it did. And she she says she's she's ready to go for tomorrow night. And then Asia, yeah, it, it's uh, you know it speaks for itself. You know she just she's fun to, to coach, she's fun to work with. Uh, she's just she's just a kid that gets in the gym and loves what she does. You know, there's, there, there, there's a handful that you can truly say, hey, this is what they want to do. Asia wants to be a professional basketball player. You know, on top of that, she was our ACC Scholar Athlete of the Year. 
So not only does she want to be a professional basketball player, but she's taking care of business in the classroom as well. Um, and it's, she's the last one out of the gym. She's in the gym before practice. She just loves, she loves the game. One last question if we have it. Over here on the left. Real quick, just wanted to ask you a little bit more about Asia. Just this time of year, we've talked a lot this season about how much she helps her teammates, but what does she do to kind of help her teammates this time of year especially? Well, I think you just go back to that second round matchup against Michigan. I mean, she's got the first two assists of the game. You know, she's really developed. She's gotten better and better through her, her four years. And what, what I challenged her with last year in the offseason was – becoming that, that, that player that can read when you're getting doubled or someone is, is sending a blitz at you, being able to get off the ball at the right time. And I thought that Michigan game, you know, she came off two ball screens and they attacked her and she makes the right read and now all of a sudden it's two, it's two assist. And as a coach, if you're on the other side, it's like, God, what, what do I do now? You know, so she's been doing a great job of getting her teammates involved. She knows the pass to make. She knows where they're supposed to be. But then at the same time, you know, she understands when she's got to put the ball in the basket. You know, she's got to be aggressive for us tomorrow night. She, she was aggressive against uh, Michigan, and that's what we're going to need in order for us to continue to have a chance to win. Coach, thank you for doing this. Thank Good you, everybody. You. Appreciate it. Good seeing you.
as we get settled here, just a reminder, please uh, address questions directly to each of the student athletes so that we can get that on the, uh, on the recordings and the transcripts. Uh, ladies, if you would, well, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Uh, please be sure to uh, speak into the microphone when answering questions so that, again, we can get them on the recording. Uh, we'll start with questions from the media if we have them. Doug, up here on the right. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Asia, Coach said that it's not distracting you guys when rumors come out about coaches. Obviously, you're, Sam got the new job at uh, school already. Is he right? I mean, you guys see social media, I'm sure. Is it distracting when you see your coach being listed as potential candidates for other schools or in the past other coaches from Louisville getting offers from other colleges? He's right, yeah. That's not really a distraction for us. Um, I don't know why. People ask why, like, why do, don't you let it bother you? And I'm just like, we just don't. We just, we're here to play ball. So we're not really worried about what's on Twitter, Snapchat, all that type of stuff. So uh, we're here to play ball. Next question. Over here on the left. For Asia and Sam, um, you guys played Oregon State last year, and I know it was a tough first half. What were you guys able to do in that second half to pull away from them? And do you expect to, not the same thing to happen, but do you expect a similar type of game as the, as the first half against them this year? It's going to be a dog fight, most, yes. Surely, it sure will be. So um, they're going to come out um, on fire. They're going to come out um, with the bad taste in their mouth from last year. So uh, it's, it's going to be a challenge for us. And we're going to get their best shot. So we have to be prepared for that and uh, play our game as well. Sam? Yeah, I think they're going to be fired up because of last year's um, game. But um, yeah, we're just going to attack them like we did last year. And to add on to what Asia said, we had a fire start, I feel like. We were all together with that. So we're going to try that again and hopefully keep that throughout the entire game. Other questions, if we have them? Over here on the left. Yeah, this is for um, Sam and for Erica. Obviously, the, the ACC final was kind of tough. Eric, you weren't able to play, and Sam, you got hurt during that game. And Jeff said afterwards, we kind of just need to regroup a little, get people healthy. You, can you just talk about what those two weeks were like, you know, and, and how well you were able to play in the first round and just, you know, getting ba bounce, bouncing back after that ACC final? Uh, I feel like those two weeks were, uh, well, a week, because I took a week off. Um, but I mean, the trainers and the staff, they were all hitting my phone, all calling me. And um, it was like treatment in the morning and like treatment after practice and then treatment later that night. So it was like three times a day type of treatment. And um, there was times where, I mean, AC was in a, in a training room with me and I was like, I have to do treatment again? Like it was just so much, but I understand it now because of how fast I got back. So I'm appreciative for that. And Erica? Um, I think we just did a great job of focusing on um, making sure that we're doing everything right to get healthy. I mean, me and Sam were sharing a game ready at home to make sure that we were continuing to ice our, our areas. And not and to mention she stole the ice from my freezer to use it. <laughs> it's okay, we're a team, we did it together. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we just made sure, you know, our staff and <laughs> <laughs> and our teammates were just making sure that we were okay and, and doing the things we needed to do to get back. Um, because when we're a complete team, we're hard to stop. Thank you. Doug, on the right here. Sort of piggybacking on Michelle's question, Erica. Coach said that he discussed with you whether you want to play or not, if you're healthy now. And your answer usually, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But he said before the ACC tournament final game, you were like, I, I can't go, I can't right now. So how do you feel now? having a little bit of time off, like where do you think you are physically for this weekend for the games you have ahead? I'm excited, you know, like I said before, I've been doing everything with treatment that I can do to make sure I'm ready for today. Um, yes, I'm not I'm not 100%, but I'm going to find a way to go, you know. My teammates are always there for me, um, and my coaches know if I can't go, then I really can't go, but um, I'm doing treatment every day, like Sam said, three times a day, so I feel like I'm going to be ready for this tournament. Thank you. Additional questions, if we have them? 
up here on the left. Um, Sam, I was asked Jeff about this. That you guys, I think he said the last two years haven't had an all ACC defender on the all ACC defensive team, and yet have been the best defensive team. And he said he credits that a lot to just the team defense. Can you talk about that, and also talk about just your personal fearlessness in terms of taking charges? Uh, I mean, I'm uh, I'm willing to give my body up for the team, no matter what. Um, but. As for the defensive stuff, I mean, I don't really care about the awards. I don't know if you guys do, but no, not at um, all. I mean, we work together well as a defensive team, offensive too, but like say somebody gets beat, we're having their back and we're going to help them too. That's what makes us a great defensive team and they can't give a single award to everybody on the team. So it, that's not going to happen. But. I think we're the best defensive team, so we don't need an award to show that. Asia, anything to add on that, the team's defense? Uh, Sam hit that all. Oh, she hit the jackpot on that, so. Yes. Money, money. Y'all like that, huh? Any additional questions for our student athletes? I have a joke to tell. Please. Mikasa, my teammate, told me to tell y'all this, so what does a blanket falling say? Oh, sheet. <laughs> With that, we will excuse our student athletes, thank them for their time, and wish them good luck.